Welcome to today's episode of Cardboard Academy, and today we are going to learn how to flick discs with intent, purpose, and finesse, because we are learning the fast-moving dexterity game, Catacombs Conquest. Catacombs Conquest is a dexterity game for two to four players, clocking in at about 20 minutes per game. In this game, each team is trying to reduce the other team's life total to zero points, thereby winning the game. There are four characters total, two for each team, and each team shares life. If you're playing with a full four players, then each player is going to control one character. If playing less than four players, then one or more player is going to have to play both characters on their team. The game can be played directly on a table or with a playmat for a smoother service and a narrower arena, which just so happens that they sell one separately. Setup involves building the supplied wall and arranging the five obstacles and four characters as shown. If playing with the playmat, simply put the playmat in the middle of the walled area. Both teams also need eight health point tokens flipped up to their team's side, their team's double-sided active character marker, randomly pick a side face up, and players draw four cards from their team's deck in a two to four player game, or eight cards if a player is controlling both their team's characters in a three player game, then decide randomly which team goes first. On your turn, you draw one card from your team's deck, you choose and fully resolve one card from your hand, which then goes into the discard pile, and then you flip over your team's active character marker, and finally you make a rush shot with one of the obstacles on the board where it lies. Then it is the other team's active character's turn. What is a rush shot, you might ask? Well, it's about time we actually talk about the flicking in Catacombs. Every card in the game has a shot sequence that is all the dexterity flicking business that you come to expect out of a dexterity game and must be performed in order as listed by the active character unless otherwise noted. The most common shots are the rush shot and the melee shot. The rush shot is you simply moving your character around and it does no damage if it hits anything. This is just you sprinting across the board. The melee shot, on the other hand, does one damage if you hit an enemy character, which is a good time to point out that there is no friendly fire in Catacombs Conquest. Only if you hit an enemy do you damage them. Now, we should also mention that if you're playing with a playmat, if any discs exit the play area, that is to say the playmat, you simply pick them up and put them back on the mat where they fell off. Oh, and when damage is dealt, that team just loses one of their health tokens. The other shots include special tokens, which are placed within an inch of your character, fired, then removed from the board once used. These include the missile shot, which you can flick toward an enemy, the longbow shot, which does the same but can be placed and fired within an inch of either character on your team, the target shot, which requires you to declare a target which it can only damage, but you can flick it a second time from where it lands if it didn't initially succeed. And finally, the wave shot, which is ridiculously big and awesome and terrifying to have thrown at your character's face. See, almost all attacks in Catacombs Conquests will deal one damage, but occasionally a card will show a picture of a melee attack or a wave shot showing a red filled in symbol. This is a critical melee or a critical wave shot, which in the case of melee does two damage or in the case of a critical wave shot deals two damage or three damage if the player discards an extra card. Ooh, those are rare, but they are game changers. And life totals are shared between characters on a team. So working together, positioning, and looking out for your teammate is paramount. Once the shot is performed, you resolve any text on the card. These can have a wide variety of effects from drawing additional cards to stealing delicious, delicious life from an opponent. Furthermore, some cards have armor symbols. Once played, these cards are reserved face up off to the side and can be discarded during future turns to fully nullify the damage from a shot. Typically, these are reserved for larger critical attacks or cards whose effects state if you deal damage dot dot dot, but are helpful in a variety of circumstances. So finally, after your card is fully resolved, you take your team's active character marker, you flip it over, then you perform a rush shot with one of the obstacles on the board. Your choice. Again, since this is a rush shot, it deals no damage, but it is both tactical and fun to punt another team's character around and use this opportunity to push them to the other side of the board or give yourself some much needed cover. 
Finally, after making your rush shot with one of the obstacles, it is the other team's turn. The game continues as such until a team's health is reduced to zero, at which time the game immediately ends and the other team wins. As some light strategic advice, pay attention to what characters will act next when moving obstacles. Use cards with multiple one damage shots in their shot sequence when your opponents have armor available. And don't hesitate to use a big whammy critical wave shot, discarding a card to do three damage all at once. It means you now have one less card to work with, but three damage goes a long way in Catacombs Conquest. And that is how you flick discs and play Catacombs Conquest. Thank you so much to PlatypusCon for partnering and creating this video. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Or better yet, if you're at the convention, come say hi and let us know what you think. And if you happen to have any Pelminis from up the road, I wouldn't say no on a cold night in Juneau, Alaska. Thanks for watching. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald. If you enjoyed this video, we have all kinds of other reviews, interviews, and recommendations via writing, podcasts, and video here on our channel and website CardboardHerald.com. Our content is audience supported, so if you want to show your support, please visit our Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.